in accordance with the Indian tradition that God, who normally is unseen and unmanifested, although omnipresent, can occasionally take the decision to appear in human form for the last 80 years during the festival of Shiva Rathi, a festival held in honor of Shiva on a night with a new moon between February and March. Sai Baba has regularly produced a series of miracles. One of these miracles consists of the materializing of Vibhuti, the holy ash, making it pour out of a vase until it completely covers a statue of Shirdi Baba, the great Muslim teacher, whom he sees as his previous incarnation. Shirdi Baba, who today still has millions of followers, arrived in the village of Shirdi in 1854 and died there in 1918. He advocated a most unusual kind of eclecticism in India. He was Muslim, yet sang verses of the Veda, Hindu texts, and he welcomed members of both religions, which created a great scandal. Far more ash pours from a vase than could possibly have been inside. It stops flowing when he stops moving his hand or removes it to insert the other. It's interesting to notice how he produces more of a beauty with his right hand than with his left. What does Baba have to say about his miracles? How does he see them? They're my credentials, he says. By this he means that the Leela, miracles in Sanskrit, are divine action whose purpose is to surprise and to make people think, to deepen their perception, to lead them in their spiritual research. Us in different forms every 2,000 years. Well, the last one we had was Jesus come down and Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, Rama and now Sai Baba. Mm. He he can be he can manifest himself while he's in India and he could be anywhere. Anywhere he can manifest. And that's of the ash coming out of the photos, um mm. and, and some and there are times when he just passes hand and in a circle and the Vibhuti just come out of his hands to you, to me, to anybody he wishes. This materializing of Vibhuti is something that Sai Baba repeats many times during the Darshan, the moment of meeting and prayer which takes place once or twice a day. But he also does it in enclosed spaces amongst the passengers of the airliner which often takes him from Bombay to Bangalore. Here, in the big courtyard, I have seen Baba create sweets of various kinds and sizes, mainly for his pupils. And he does it with great enjoyment. This is actually quite amazing, though, because you only ever see these sort of things on TV, but you know, when you're actually up close to it, it's sort of a different experience altogether. Can you feel the different? A lot of people can I can feel, feel a sense of energy. A lot of people can feel the sense of energy. Is, is, uh, so um, you're saying that uh, this gentleman is sort of like, God on earth, sort of in this tra same tradition as Jesus and other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, mm. The question is, uh, is, is there actually, uh, so he's partly Hindu religion, but is there an actual sort of sect that sort of follows. No, he's non religious. Oh, okay. Non religious. So he can say you could be Christian, Catholic, uh, Hindu, Muslim, it does not matter. Right, has he um, produced any writings at all, Sai Baba? Oh, many, many. He's got a whole ashram in India and all over the world. There is not one one nationality that does not believe in Sai Baba. Well, that Vibhuti is amazing to me. Um. Yeah, well, Vibhuti is not just for show, it's a healing thing. You know, people, if they're not well, they take it, or people that's upset, they'll take it and they feel better. But, you know, same as the Hindu use Vibhuti in Sanskrit it means glory, splendor. And uh, it is an indication of the splendor of the Lord. Baba gives Vibhuti by a wave of his hand, creating it. That is to say, a part of himself, a part of his own splendor. You will see on my forehead I got the uh, a big paste of Vibhuti, and Baba once called it a bandage. And I consider it a bandage which will save me from the illness of bondage. Another meaning that he gives is that it is the ultimate. 
the irreducibility. You can't uh, turn ash into something else. It is, it is the ultimate. Once it has become ash, whatever you do with it, it will remain ash. And so it is the irreducible article. You can't proceed beyond that. Many it is the ultimate. So more or less that's his presence to me. That that uh, sort of let, let me know that is his presence. Yeah, there's one in the, in the little photo that I've got inside there. Hmm. Just one day the glass was clean, another day the blop, 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 blop. It's, yeah. Well, there's something about it, isn't it? There's a quantity there that's sort of, you know, yeah. something there, you know. It's yeah, and to really appreciate it, you have to go there yourself and meet the man himself. Not, you will see him, but uh, uh, he was, you could, thousands upon thousands of people will see him. But how many he will, how many people he will see is another story. He, he, he walked every day amongst thousands in the ashram. And sometimes he would say, wave out to certain groups and they would go specially into his little room to, for interview personally. And I happened to be one of the very lucky ones, uh, New Zealand group, that when we were in 1998 or 1999, were called up. And uh, wow, it was something that you can only experience yourself. You cannot even explain what it feel like and when he looks into your eyes um, like he's speaking to you look into your eyes you're in a different atmosphere in a different planet sort of thing yeah you don't you don't even know who's beside you although there's thousands beside you you don't you don't reckon it's all just you and him like sitting floating on cloud and my husband um, he, he was there and he manifest a, a chain with a medallion and put it around his neck just like that. Medallion came out and put it and when he put it on his neck, he was just floating on air. He couldn't his feet couldn't touch the ground. And he said, Oh he said, Did he try to walk? And he said, Oh help me, help me. I During can't a normal around. darshan, I had the luck to see and film one of these materializations of metallic objects, which he was making for someone who was right there, close to my camera. Something is shining there. A golden ring. These are moments of intense joy for the recipients, but also for anyone standing nearby who sees this extraordinary process. I know at least two explanations given by Baba for his creation of necklaces and rings to show the futility of riches and to give the faithful something physical to guide his thoughts and to enable him to turn to Baba directly in a moment of need. The most up-to-date aspect of Baba's thoughts lies in this very idea of direct spiritual contact, eliminating any kind of representative or church. You cannot recall it, you cannot explain it, like a woman having a child, only that woman at the precise moment can feel what she feels. After that, you can say it's pain, you can say this and that, but you can never recall exactly what it feels like. No, that's you an interesting way of putting it. Yeah.